Hey everyone and welcome back to the Cave of Collectibles. I'm here today to share with you my haul slash Christmas acquisitions for lack of a better word. Now once again this isn't usually how much I get in a month. I normally don't get a whole bunch but I've sold a few stuff recently and with the Christmas break and everything and holidays and presents and all of that it's really helped with my pickups this month so Let's quickly get started, I don't want to keep you too long. We'll start with the novels today. I picked up, or got given up rather, I should say, Star Wars Force Collector Journey to the Rise of Skywalker, a prequel novel. I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to that one. I also managed to finally find a copy of this book, Star Wars Myths and Fables. It's a fairly recent one, but... I actually found it shelved in the juvenile kids sort of section at one of the bookshops where I go. So I picked it up because I found it there for a good price. It's basically just a bunch of myths and fables set in the Star Wars universe. So it is another one of the canon books. There is some nice artwork in it. Like, there we go. But it should be a fairly quick read and I'm looking forward to getting into that one. I also love my fantasy novels. I'm not too sure what this one's about. It's about a girl who is trained to be an assassin. So I picked this up. It sounded quite interesting during the Boxing Day sales. You can see the statues at the back. I've already uploaded a unboxing for both the Catwoman and the Harley Quinn. So I'm not going to go into too much detail now. Here we've got Star Wars Allegiance, which I picked up by... Ethan Sachs, and I'm not sure about the first names of the others. I can show you the credits page if you want. There we go. Now, I haven't actually read this yet, but I have seen the new movie twice. There is some really nice artwork in here. I'm looking forward to getting into it because I do love all these tie-ins for Star Wars, especially because they are considered canon. You've got Finn there, Poe, BB-8. Looks like... The standard character, for, standard character roster for the new trilogy. Some nice variant covers at the back. A little bit of extras. So yeah, that looks quite good. And there's the beautiful cover by Marco Cicchetto. For the four covers of the single issues that join together. There's some advertisements for other Star Wars comics. And I'm getting into this series a bit late. I picked up Poe Dameron. Volume 1, Black Squadron. I've been meaning to read this for ages, but with all the other Star Wars comics I've been getting, there's been no need to pick it up just yet, but now I don't have too many Star Wars comics for the new canon to pick up left now, so slowly starting to get them all. He's such a great character, Poe Dameron. I really, really enjoyed him, but I wasn't a huge fan of the direction that they took him in. The most recent Star Wars movie. I'm not going to go into any more detail. Because I know some people still haven't seen it. But. That was my only major thing. I didn't really like about the new movie. Let me know what you think. About the new movie in the comments below. I loved it. I have enjoyed all the new Star Wars ones. It's always good to see. More content come out of the ones we like. The stuff we enjoy. And there's not really any extras in that one. Now I picked up the last. Two volumes of The Red Hood and The Outlaws run by Scott Lobdell for The New 52. I'll give you a quick flip. Let me say that again. I'll give you a quick flip through them both. It's got some beautiful artwork in here. It always does though. These volumes, there's some great characters. And I've really enjoyed this run. I'm looking forward to giving these two a read. Do love Starfire, she's a great character. Red Hood as well. So there's a good roster of characters in here. Is there many vol many extras in this one? There looks like there's a few sketches. And that's about it. And volume seven as well. After this it goes into the Red Hood Arsenal. The two volumes I think they did about twelve issues, so that is on my to get list eventually. But, yeah. 
once again the artwork looks quite solid in here and I often find that um the art can make or break a story even if the writing's not that great. If the art's horrible I really can't read a story regardless of how good the writing actually is. So and the opposite can be said as well. If the story is not great but it's got great artwork I can put up with it and I can actually read through it. It's quite good and then it's a shame it's the end of the run but at least it continued into the new or not new 52 into um Reaper with a different team so we're luckily still getting it by Scott Labdell as well. Female Furies I picked up. This contains issues 1 through 6 I believe and Mr. Miracle number 9. And once again, being one of the newer volumes, it's printed on the newer matte paper. If you want a, any more of an in-detailed look at any of these comics, just let me know. I'm happy to keep doing the overview videos. I do enjoy doing those ones. I'll put up one on Friday, I believe, for Grant Morrison's Green Lantern run. With the first two volumes I will do before it goes into the Black Stars which is a three issue series. There's some beautiful art in this what in this book and then at the end you've got the older Mr. Miracle issue. Which the art there looks quite solid as well. And let's check the extras. There's a few variant covers by the looks of it, or one, a couple of sketches. And that's about it. There's not many not many extras in these books this week. Um, I've got Aquaman Volume 2 Amnesty by Sally, Kelly Sue DeConnick. Sorry, it's been a long few days. My pronunciation isn't there. And this collects Aquaman number 48 through 52. A life remembered. We'll chuck that to one side. Give you a quick overview of the dust. Oh, not the dust jacket, the actual cover itself. And it's continuing the spines of the trades. But the dust jacket has a different spine. It's quite a nice cover there. Once again, it's got the new, the new paper stock. The art style, especially the eyes and the face, reminds me of Greg Capullo. But I know it's not him because I've already checked the artist's. But it looks like a good read. I love the Aquaman with the beard and the long hair. Wasn't a big fan of the short hair design which they had through the new 52. So I'm really glad they went back to this character design. It looks much, much better. It makes him look well, more hardcore, I reckon, and meaning more business. Then we've got Wonder Woman, Black Manta. It's always good to see Black Manta. It's such a great, compelling villain. And such a great balance to Aquaman as well. There we go. Are there many extras in this book? Let's find out. No. One sketch. Two, three. Not much again. But at least there's no ads in there. It's a shame we're not getting many extras this week. There's some of the best things. And here, finally for today... Deceased by Tom Taylor. I've heard really, really good stuff about this book, so I'm looking really, really forward to reading it. It contains Deceased 1 through 6 and Deceased A Good Day to Die, number 1. Let's have a qu quick flip through. And once again, we've got this beautiful new matte paper stock. The art in this book is absolutely beautiful. So, this will be such a joy to read. I have a feeling this will be a really, really quick read as well. I love Tom Taylor. Doesn't look too wordy either. But with the art in here, I reckon this will just flow and you'll go bam right through it. Superman. Always good to see Superman. This art is absolutely beautiful. Sorry if I give away any spoilers. Like I said, I haven't read this one yet, so I'm not too sure. There we go. 
That's a beautiful cover there. Let's speed it up a bit. Manhunter, Lex Luthor, Soaps, Wonder Woman. Oh, I'll just flip to the end. I have a feeling there's too many spoilers here. And these variant covers are absolutely beautiful here. With all the infected heroes. And there's the, an It Inspired cover, which looks awesome as well. They're all pretty awesome. I'm really, really looking forward to this. It's a nice thick one as well. Let's just chuck these back over here and I'll let you know what the contents of the issues which I missed before. Volume 7 of Red Hood and the Outlaws Last Call contains issues 35 through 40 and the Futures and number 1. Which once again, they're beautiful looking books. Volume 6 contains, where are we? Issues 32 through 34 and annual number 2. So that's quite a short one. But the art in there looks great anyway. Poe Dameron Volume 1. Black Squadron contains issues number 1 through 6. Oh, we've got Temin up there. Great character, especially if you've read the Aftermath trilogy. And yeah, Star Wars is sad for a particular reason in the new movie, but once again, spoilers. Allegiance 1 through 4, there's 4 issues in there. But once again, beautiful artwork in there, really looking forward to that one. And obviously the books don't have issue numbers. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment and otherwise I'll see you all in the next video.